and come on in. Well, I'm down. Well, I'm down. bless each and every one of you that's on and go the way our thoughts was going to go, but nonetheless, it's the intro for the night. God bless uh, you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Oak Grove NBC Apex Wednesday Now, Pastor Cobb, and thank you so much for allowing us to come into your homes or wherever you wherever you may be. Uh, as usual, we want to start by uh, giving you a few reminders, a few things for us to think about as we go into our time that we're going to share together uh, as we are in our series of Family Matters. We're going to conclude um, this month, and, and the Lord willing. Uh, so uh, first, we want to um, just remind uh, you that we will have Watch Night uh, 2024 here at the Grove uh, at 10, 15 p.m. So meet us here at the Grove on uh, New Year's Eve um, at uh, 10, 15 uh, p.m. And we will have service for those that may uh, want, want to know we will have service for the remainder of the year so uh, we've still got a few more Sundays to go uh, fourth and fifth so uh, if you don't have anywhere to worship um, you feel free to come and join us at 12 p.m. Uh, also, uh, we invite you to be our guest. We're just uh, wanting to finish this year on a high note, and so we are desiring to see our church um, packed and running over. So uh, those that desire to be a part of our fellowship uh, our church services, you may do so. Uh, so we've got everybody, uh, uh, invite somebody to church uh, for the month of December. So uh, you can come and be my guest uh, for the month of December or for the rest of December uh, if uh, you so desire. Uh, also, by way of uh, reminders, we just want to remind um, all of us to be in prayer uh, for those that are less fortunate than we are. Uh, there are so many people that are less fortunate than we are. So uh, that's why we are launching the um, uh, Make an Impact Impact by Giving Back campaign, which uh, we are going, we're putting those together. Um, and thank you so much for those that have done what you've done. Um, and if you, maybe you're watching tonight saying, Brother Cobb, I, I, I want to be a part of it. Um, you, you, you still have some time. I know that we had the cutoff date for the 17th, but certainly if you have items that you may want to want to still give, um, you know, uh, you just, again, $10 is what we've kind of talked about here at the Grove, how you can go to Dollar Tree and get, and get 10 items. I mean, of course, it's going to be, you know, a little bit more than uh, $10, but, uh, and just be a blessing. Get some toothpaste, get some toothbrushes, the travel size, um, you can get some, uh, pack some nabs, um, things like that, some some peppermint uh, candy. Uh, those are the things that we're putting in these care packages and we're gonna give these to those that are less fortunate than we are. And so uh, we wanna do that this year. And so we're gathering those things together. And so thank you again for those that have sacrificed. Perhaps you say, I, I, don't, I don't have the time to, to stop by or every time I go to Walmart, I forget. You can send uh, your uh, donation to uh, uh, us virtually if you desire. Um, or if you come in person, you can give uh, there uh, at that time as well. Uh, but uh, uh, if we have a, a platform on PayPal, uh, just put Oak Grove NBC Apex at gmail.com, uh, or you can give by way of Cash App and give a fine and handle the same is the same Oak Grove NBC Apex. And so, um, tis the season, tis the season for giving, tis the season for showing love, and tis the season for being that light. So, uh, thank you uh, so much, and uh, for those that have been a part and those that that may. Uh, do so after uh, this broadcast or even right now. Uh, so on tonight, if you have not hit that share button, hit the share button. Sharing is caring to know, let someone know that we are on the air. So we, we last week, we really just hung our hats on marriage and um, uh, that's how 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 the family structure um, started uh, as it relates to Genesis and so those that uh, were in uh, uh, in our uh, class virtual class uh, we we know that and we discussed that the order of family is uh, God uh, the man uh, the woman and and of course 
uh, children would come from that. Um, and, and that does not mean from a, 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 a place of um, superiority. It means of a place of responsibility. Um, God gave the instructions to Adam, which says that he was responsible for covering his wife and being uh, what he needed to be to her. And how God just brought her to him. Um, God brought Eve to Adam. Um, and so that was that is to let us know that, that God trusted him. God trusted him to bring Eve uh, to him. So again, if you did not, if you were not part of our uh, time that we shared together last week, go back and, and read Genesis chapter one, two, and three. So you can just get all of that um, as it relates to the word of God. All right, so let's move a little bit further uh, in, in our series, Family Matters. Uh, Ephesians chapter five, verses 22 through 33. Ephesians chapter five, verses 22, 22 through 33. Uh, I'm gonna read that for your consideration. May not read all the verses tonight, but I just wanna uh, just use something, uh, some, some, some of the verses as a launching pad. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the, head, uh, as unto the Lord, excuse me. Uh, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Uh, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. So there, now we're getting into the description of what the husband should be doing. What is the husband's role? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 26, that he, may, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Hmm. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause uh, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall, and, and, and they too shall be one flesh. All right, we'll just stop there. We, we just went to verse uh, 31. Uh, before we go into our time that we're going to share together, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the time that we're going to uh, dive into your word. Bless this time. Bless this opportunity. We thank you for this platform. We thank you for this privilege. And God, we pray after everything is said and done, you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, so when we look at Ephesians, and uh, we got a parallel, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, to Genesis, uh, because we understand uh, that Paul goes a little bit uh, further than uh, it we see in Genesis um, uh, as far as the roles, who does what. Uh, and, and so, again, uh, this is from a biblical perspective, uh, not more so from the perspective of what I think it should be, but from, from what the, the word of God says. So, so as we talk about family matters, we understand that families matter to God. So our families, are, you know, whether our families are flawed, fickle, fake, you know, funny acting, uh, human beings in the family. You know, we got some family members that, that uh, you know, uh, as we say, may not be wrapped you know, too, too tight. Uh, but they're still our family. Uh, our families are different, right? We, we have some dysfunctional families. Um, we have some, you know, where we, uh, you know, we've got the, uh, you know, there may be, you know, specific uh, loved ones in the family that just do things that may not necessarily be uh, how they should be, but they're still our families. You know, you got some, you got some love. I'm trying to say it nice, but you got some loved ones that you don't really hang out like you do with the other ones. Right. Um, and so we got some people that are in our families that are a little, um, that, that makes things <laughs> a little interesting, but they're still your, your, your family, you know? So, so regardless of what your family structure looks like, because you can't control what other people do, our families matter to God. Our families matter to God because again, it's something that he instituted. And here's how I know, because God loves families so much that he sent his son to be born into a family. Notice that God could have caused Jesus to just pop up. You know, notice when he created everything else, he said, let there be, let there be, let there be. And, uh, but when he got to man, he took his time. And even when God, uh, made, you know, even when Jesus uh, came in the form of flesh, he could have just popped up up scene, but God allowed him to have a mother, allowed him to have a, allowed him to have a father. We know that, uh, of course, um, Jesus had some, some brothers, 
uh, um, as well. Uh, but Jesus was born into a family. Uh, and and that, that goes to show us that God endorses family and what uh, the family structure should look like. He had a mother, which was a woman. He had a father, which was um, uh, a man. And, and uh, of course, uh, we have the child. So, so as we move on, as we talk about um, the, the godly family, the godly family, what it means to, to be a godly family. Uh, in Ephesians, uh, when God talks to the husband, Notice, uh, you notice that it, it, in seven verses, Paul just says what he needs to say to, to the man, right? Um, and, and then we go back and we look at that in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 to 32. We see that the husband's first role is to love the wife, right? His first role is to love the wife. And so uh, we understand that this love that the husband should have for the wife is not... Um, you know, phileia, which is a, you know, deep friendship. It is not, you know, eros only, which is just like a passionate type of love, even though the husband and wife, uh, will share that, um, is not, uh, pragma, which is a, uh, you know, just long standing, um, but it is agape. Uh, it is a unconditional love that the husband should have. So the husband's role is to love his wife. Uh, but if we revert and if we understand, we've got to understand something, that you cannot do something that you are not uh, aware of. So in other words, the husband is not able to love the wife until he first have loved himself. Uh, you know, that, that's just simply put. And then we said it on last week. Every, uh, you know, we use that, that scripture, you know, uh, it's not good for a, a, a man to be alone. And uh, we said some, some men, some men uh, should be alone if they have not matured. <clears throat> because when you talk about marriage, you're talking about a certain level of maturity that you should have. Not saying you're perfect, but when you go into holy matrimony with a partner, with, you know, a man and with a woman, one with a man, um, you should have a certain level of maturity. A certain level of accountability. And it is it is matured. That accountability matures and responsibility matures. You understand, um, you know, you know, things look different as you as you go uh, and grow together. Uh, but the husband's first responsibility is to love uh, the woman with the love of Christ. Um, and so it is God's desire for the man to agape or the husband to agape his wife, just as Jesus agape is the church. Right. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about how uh, he is to make her holy in verse 26 uh, by the cleansing her with the washing of the water. Uh, and this is in connection with the word of God. And so not only should the man uh, 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 love his wife, but he should uh, continue to pour out the word of God unto her, right? He should be talking, nothing wrong with talking about business goals and, and, and how you want to raise your children and, 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 and what neighborhood you want to live in and, and, and what's the square footage of the house. But uh, your conversation should also consist of the word of God. And it's the husband's responsibility and role to, to, to pour out the word of God uh, to his uh, wife. Uh, Husbands should constantly pour out, constantly pour out, constantly pour out the word of God into his wife. Why? Because the more you pour, the more you pour, the more they're going to observe, or, uh, absorb, excuse me, the more they're going to uh, uh, absorb. And so, and so, well, uh, I would say observe and absorb, right? They're going to see it. And they're going to absorb it. And they're going to soak it up. So the husband should be constantly pouring out the word of God into his wife. So it is the husband's responsibility to ensure that the wife is in an environment where she is being poured into by the word of God. So the husband must be able to minister to his wife. It doesn't mean you got to preach to her, you know, give her a list of do's and don'ts and I said and all that. No, but what that means is that uh, you must understand the how women are made up differently than men, right? Women have a lot of feelings, emotions, and weights that they carry. Um, and so as the priest of the house, which the husband should be, not the shot caller, because again, we said that one of the myths to marriage is I'm the shot caller because I'm the head honcho, you know, no, no, no. Uh, God is the head. You know, he is the shot caller. He calls the shot. But as the priest of the house, um, which the husband is, the husband should keep his wife covered in the word. And he should be he should be willing to do that 
consistently and continuously. And so part of that would be um, to put to go to a church or uh, uh, be a part of a church where she can be poured into. Now, it is not the pastors unless that husband is his wife's pastor, uh, you know, uh, but uh, it is not. You know, saying, well, you know, because we go to church, she, she don't get the word of God. No, in the home, you should be ministering to your wife the word of God. And uh, well, I don't know it like that. Well, you, you got to get to know the word of God. It, and so, again, when we talk about marriage, it's a big responsibility. Family matters. Family matters. We, and I think a lot of times when we go into marriage, we go into it so with this thought process of, you know, whatever. But the reality is, it is a commitment, but it's a lot of responsibility. So he must pour into the uh, into his wife. Um, and so um, it, it, the wife's husband um, is not uh, is not to be, that doesn't mean your husband is your pastor unless he is your pastor, right? So it's not, you know, you know he got a word from, no, no, no. Uh, but but he, he, the husband should stay in the word of God. Right. He should stay in the word of God so that he can pour out unto his wife. Uh, and so the husband's life must consist of prayer and studying the word of God. Now, it, it could be in some cases where the wife may have a stronger prayer life. Right. And there are some women that are just I mean, they're strong prayer warriors. They're strong prayer warriors. Uh, and, and most of the prayer warriors I know in my life uh, have been women. You know, I know a lot of men that know how to pray, but uh, most times it's been you know women that are strong in prayer. Uh, but that so doesn't necessarily mean that your wife, if, if she has a stronger prayer life than you, that oh you get adequate. No, but you should still be in a position position where you're pouring into her and covering her with the Word of God. And so uh, uh, the husbands ought to love their wives uh, as you love yourself. Uh, and love and love and love your wife as Christ loves, right? So 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 men, uh, we we naturally kind of love ourselves. You know, we we naturally love ourselves. We 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 love uh, the ego. You know, men are very competitive. Um, you know, we men. You know, men are very competitive. We 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 naturally uh, uh, love uh, our, ourselves, uh, but we should have. A, a certain care and consideration for our spouses. So you should care for your wife. Uh, you sh there should be a strong love. And so when uh, a husband uh, loves his wife unconditionally, uh, if she is a godly woman, and now notice I said if she is a godly woman, and, and that's again, that's a part of, I think that's a part of, of, of marriage. Uh, if you are saved, unless you are, uh, in the case of Hosea and Goma, where, where God told Hosea, the prophet, the man of God, to go marry that prostitute. Unless God commands you to do something like that, and the Holy Spirit commands you to do something like that, uh, how can two walk together except they agree? And, uh, 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 you know, it, it, you know, unless God is telling you something, commanding you to do something like that, and it's the Holy Spirit, um, you should be seeking someone that is saved and love the Lord. We, we are not in the, you know, some people, I'm going to convert them. <laughs> You think because you marry them, they're going to get saved. And don't get wrong. The sanctified, the, 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 the Bible does say that the sanctified wife can sanctify her husband or sanctified husband can sanctify his wife. But when seeking a partner to be in partnership with, if you are saved, you should be seeking someone that's like-minded. It is you saved and love the Lord. And, uh, you know, so, so you need to seek someone. You can't walk together unless you agree, right? Um, and so... Uh, uh, a woman that is a godly woman, if the husband loves unconditionally, you won't have any issue with her following you. She'll follow your lead without any hesitation because where there's love, there's trust, right? Where there's love, there's trust. Um, so as we move on, um, the husband should love the wife. Um, and, 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 and as we read on, as we move on to the, the priorities and responsibility, the wife is her, 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 re, her responsibility, her role, is to respect her husband. So we, we, we've we said that the husband should love his wife, right? Uh, he should agape her. Um, he should also pour into her the word of God um, and uh, minister unto her. Uh, but he, but then we come, when it comes to the wife, uh, the wife should respect, and there should, there should be a certain reverence to the husband. 
And we see this in our society that uh, when, we, when we look, think about the phrase, a man's home is his castle. And that's so true because sometimes the only place a man can get respect is his house. Uh, you know, your job can be disrespectful. This society that we live in can be disrespectful. You know, our government, well, you know, a lot of places can be disrespectful. But the one place that we should be able to find respect and reverence is in the home. So, uh, uh, so the wife should respect her husband. And so, um, uh, one of the reasons that Adam and Eve failed in the garden was because Eve failed to respect her husband because had she respected him, she would not have tried to control her husband by uh, engaging or tempting him to eat of the fruit. Now, don't get me wrong. The commandment was given to Adam. He should have been a little bit more observant on his A game. But the fact of the matter is if he would have been in right fellowship and commitment, she would have been off somewhere allowing a serpent to minister to her. So, you, so, so are you, are you understand what I'm saying? That's, that's a part of the derailment, the deviation, and the devastation that the enemy desires to bring to our marriages. Because instead of her listening to the what the uh, to who God had given her to be her leader, which was her husband, uh, and the, you know, uh, she was listening to someone else. And because Adam was not in right position. Uh, uh, and, and, and did not, was not in, you know, right standing, he fell for her deception. She had been deceived and that's what she did to him. She was deceived and then that was done to him. But the whole root or uh, underlying tone that I want to kind of com communicate to us is that he should have never tried to convince her husband to eat other fruit because that was a form of disrespect. And I know we can go on and on about that. You know, I'll just see what I'm saying. Is that uh, trying to, if it one thing that she would have ate of the fruit and just say, hey, look, I, I messed up. But then she's going to try to get him to do what she did. So so that that not giving him the respect that he deserves. There has to be a certain reverence that the wife should have for the husband. Whether the wife, the wife can be smarter than the husband. The wife can be, you know, she can be more uh, studious. She could be more fluent. She could be more, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, that never means or never gives the right for a wife to be disrespectful. So she still has to respect her husband. Um, so the wife's role, as we look at um, uh, 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 Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24, uh, is to submit, right? So she respects her husband. And how do you respect? By submitting. Oh, I ain't, I ain't listening to nobody. I, I ain't little about telling me what to do. It's not a control mechanism. Submitting is the submission that the that the wife does to the husband literally is a submission to the God that's in him. So so submission, uh, sisters, is not a sign of weakness, but rather it's a sign of strength because it takes humility to submit. That means to come up under. To come up under his authority. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23 from the Amplified Classic Version says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands and unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So the same way that Christ leads the church, the husband is to lead the wife. But he, he can't lead unless she submits to his leadership. Because if she's not willing to follow, then he's not really a leader. Because if you are a leader and ain't nobody following you, you're just taking a walk. So, so um, what do you do, sisters, when the conversation gets to a place where there's no agreement? Submit. Agree to disagree. That's a part of, and that's not being uh, a male chauvinist or sexist, uh, because if the husband role is to love, to pour into her the word of God, uh, to, that she would be cleansed, uh, even when there's disagreements, uh, unless it is causing uh, harm, uh, it is against the word of God, or placing the family in an ungodly predicament, the wife should stay in that place of submitting. 
Now, we understand that God gives us common sense before he gives us spiritual sense. So if, you know, well, let's go out and let's go drink um, some Kool-Aid with arsenic poison. Now, we, we know that God ain't calling you to do nothing like that. I mean, so, you know, you have common sense. First. But submitting to the authority and not trying to overthrow him. And, he, and, and what that looks like is even if the husband is wrong, sometimes you got to let them, as long as it's not calling, causing detriment, let them be wrong. The case in point, if the husband is incorrect in front of a company of a whole bunch of folks, the, 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 the best way to resolve that is to submit. And, and instead of telling him he's wrong in front of everybody else, to wait to get uh, to wait until you get behind closed doors and say, you know what, honey, I, I you know, this is what, you know. It, 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 it's, it's, again, marriage is a commitment and agreement. And as we said on last week, many times we look at the the pop, the set, the stance, and the, the pop and circumstance um, of, of marriage, and not really looking at the meat of it. The meat of it, it is, it is a binding together of two individuals, and it is a commitment to stay together. So there can only be one head in a marriage. There's only one head. There's two physical heads, but there's one head, and the head is Christ. Right? The head is Christ, but in the family home, the husband is in uh, uh he is in uh alignment with God. And so you got God and then you got man. So the husband is the uh well, how do we file on our taxes? Uh, my wife filed head of the household, so she the head. No. The husband is the head because God says so. Not because uh, you know, he's better than her. That's just who God placed in that position. That's who. That's what. That's that's the position that God placed the man in. Um, so the husband is, not, but that does not mean that the husband is a dictator. No, he is not. He is. You know, he's not a ruler, but he is a priest in the home. He knows how to minister effectively in the home. So any time, and the reason why, listen, the reason why that he must, there only can be one head is because anything with two heads is a monster. <laughs> anything that's got more than one head is a monster and it's unnatural. So, so why should submit? Again, as long as it's not illegal, as long as it's not immoral or unethical or unscriptural, you should submit to your husband's leadership. So, so the wife should submit. Even now, think about this: What if your husband is not saved? Submit. Submit, because the reality is, let's say both of you are not saved, and then you get saved. I can't follow him because he ain't got, you're still in covenant with each other. And so you still submit so long as it's not going against the word of God. But then the wife's prayer should be that the husband would become saved and be in complete alignment with God. Because sometimes that happens. Because, well, I got saved, my husband ain't saved, so I should leave him. No, that does, just because you got saved and your husband not saved doesn't mean you abandon him. Because according to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, it says, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Uh, from the contemporary English uh, version, it says, Your husband or wife who isn't a follower is made holy by having you as a partner. So you, even though you're saved and your spouse is not, they are made holy unto God because you are in fellowship and partnership with them. So what if the wife knows the question and the answer and the husband um, does not, he, he, you know, what if there's a question and answer, you know, a question that's being asked and the wife knows the question and she knows the answer and the husband doesn't understand. Um, then that's a time for you, sister, to be in prayer and, 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 and to understand uh, because what has happened a lot of times in marriage is we submit under conditions. You know, so so the husband so to love the wife as Christ loved the church under a certain condition, as long as she cook. No. Even if she don't cook like she's supposed to, 
You're supposed to love the wife as Christ loved the church. But in the same token, the wife should submit, right? And this is why uh, it should, you know, not, I, you know, I tell me what to do. It's not, the husband should not, that's, that's not a role to tell you what to do. But as, as, your, as, as the, the priest of the household, you should be willing to submit to his leadership. So, so a lot of times, even though um, in the case that we just gave, that the, the wife may know the answer to the question, if, if the husband does not, sometimes men have to learn through error. And sometimes if you step in and go over their head, um, they will miss that teachable moment and not learn from the error, right? Because again, there is no perfect marriage. Marriage is something that we work on until what? Death do us part. So sometimes, uh, even though the wife may know, it, there's a way that you have to be humble enough to, you know, to even minister or to speak to your husband. You know, you wrong. No, hey, you know, I think that you there are way, and you learn and you work on that. So why should submit as long as it's not illegal, immoral, unethical, or unscriptural? You should submit to his leadership. So the role of submission is powerful. It is so powerful that First Peter chapter three, uh, verse one through four says, "In the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands." Subordinate not as inferior, but out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God. That's why you're submitting to because of the uh, uh, because of their uh, out of respect for their responsibilities uh, and because of their accountability to God. You understand that your husband is accountable to God. That's why you submit. If he wrong, God deals with him. If he, you know, if he didn't do what he was, God deals with him. And so partner with him so that uh, even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lies of their wives. So in other words, Peter is saying that the wives should be submissive to their husbands, not out of fear, but out of respect out of the, because, of the, the, because they've been entrusted and, and, they, and they are accountable to God. So, so, so that's why the wife should be subject or should be, uh, as we say, uh, as, as the text says, uh, submissive to her husband. So the wife should be submissive as long as it's not causing any type of unethical, illegal, immoral, unscriptural uh, activity within the home. So uh, there may be some intense fellowship from time to time. You ain't going to always agree. However, the submission is the way of God. So before you marry, one of the things that you got to ask yourself is, if we don't agree, can I still submit? Because if you're not willing to submit to a person, then you shouldn't marry them. If you're not willing to submit to a person, don't marry. Because the whole role or the, the focus of the of the woman or the wife to the husband is to submit. Now, the husband is to love the wife as Christ loved the church, pour into her the word of God, minister into unto her as God has given, but also understanding where he stands, or also the wife has to understand where he stands with God. So the submission, again, it is not a, it's, I, don't, I don't know if we got this, well, you know, roll over, do trick, it ain't about that. Man, how, how, how much, how many days a week can you get your wife to cook? It ain't about, it ain't about that. She should want to do it because that's her husband and because of her care and concern. But I would venture to say this, that part of the reason uh, that a, a, a husband can love the wife as Christ loved the church or the way that he can do that is because he first loved himself. A way that a, a wife can submit to a husband is because she is submissive. You must already be submissive to God before you can submit to your husband. Oh my gosh. And part of the reason why sometimes the sister or, or the wife is having some problems with submitting to the husband is not because he ain't a good husband, it's because she was never submitted to God. 
We must first do to God what we desire to do to others. So the husband, as he loving the wife, as Christ loved the church, he must love God unconditionally. How can he love his wife unconditionally if he don't love God unconditionally? Why? How can you love your husband or how can you submit to your husband unconditionally if you cannot submit to God? And so uh, these things must be in practice before you marry. So really, marriage is not just the walking down of the aisle. It, it, is a, it is a meeting of the minds, the spirits, and of um, also the initiatives and just the intellectual thinking. Uh, marriage is, is a beautiful thing. It's a God-ordained thing, but if it's done God's way. So, 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 um, okay. We have the, we have God, we have the wife or the husband, we have the wife, then we have the children. And, and, and I, I I'm, I'm going to wait the next week. I'm going to wait the next week to talk about children. So tune in. Tune in. Tune in next week. We're going we're to go and talk about children's responsibility and how they play a role in this. And, and we're we going to get down to, the, as, they, as they say, the, the nitty gritty. Uh, so God bless you tonight. Put those prayer requests in the chat. Um, know that we're praying with you, praying for you, praying with you. Uh, we love you with the love of God. Um, uh, let's be in prayer again as we go through this holiday season. Um, for those that are getting us less fortunate than we are, we are blessed. We are so, so blessed. As we come up on this, um, on this, on this, another Christmas, um, let's remember who, who this thing is all about. It's not about, uh, the gifts that we may get one another, which is a beautiful thing, but it's about, uh, the gift that we gave that, that, that Jesus Christ gave to us and, uh, or that God gave to us. And that was his son. And, and he gave his son, that he might give his life, that we might have a right to the tree of life. That's a beautiful thing, is to be a part of God's family. Uh, God is all about family. He's always been about family. He created family. We are part of God's family. God is our father. Um, Jesus Christ is our elder brother. And uh, he, he, he's uh, our mediator. Uh, and, uh, and so we, we are, you know, family, family, when we talk about family matters, uh, they, how, what, what does family mean to God? It means a lot. All of our families don't look the same. Uh, they may look very different. Um, and, and there are no, there, there are no two households on this, that are the same, but what should be is the love that runs and, and, and the, um, the, the, the collaboration and the fellowship with each other. So as we pray, Father, we just thank you for your word and how your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And God, we pray that the Lord you bless, bless every prayer request and lift up every petition before you. Have your way in our lives. Continue to show yourself strong and mighty. And God, we ask you to just do it and do as only you can. And God, we ask the Lord that all those prayer requests that are lifted up before you on tonight, that you would just intervene and show up and show out. And God, even those that are unspoken, that Lord, that you would just be in the midst of those. And God bless us now. Um, any way you bless us, we shall be satisfied. And we live in an ever-changing world. But God, we thank you that you're still the same. And Father, we pray until the time that we should come back together on this platform. You let peace and love abide. But God, if you should call us home, we want to hear you say, well done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. We thank you again for tuning in to another Wednesday. Now join us next week. We will jump into um, the role of the children. Um, and so, um, again, we want to uh, try to wrap this up uh, so that we can uh, start the, the new year off um, with a new series. So, again, until this time next week, know that we love you. Um, stay encouraged. Stay focused. But most of all, uh, understand that God's got something great in store for you. Uh, we love you. Uh, have a good night. Oh, no.